This propaganda machine portrayed him as a strong, fearless leader who rules Russia with an iron fist, but recent images of President Putin paint a rather different picture, a despotic dictator with a bloated face and reports he's riddled with cancer and Parkinson's disease. Well, here's Putin meeting the president of Belarus, Alexander Lukashenko, in February, hands trembling, feet shaking. And here he is struggling to walk at Russia's Victory Day celebrations earlier this month. Well, the former head of the British Secret Intelligence Service, Sir Richard Dearlove, joins me now. Sir Richard, great to see you. Very nice you are the here. real life M, aren't you? Well, you I, were. I was once. <laughs> C, C, not M. C, you were C. I'm so sorry. Of course, you were. You were higher up the up the <clears> chain. <throat> a perfect person then to talk about what is going on with Ukraine, because a lot of people are thinking the way to stop this is to get to Putin. In your previous life, would you have? been contemplating using a James Bond-like assassin to go in and take him out? I don't think that would have been a practical approach to the problem, so no. Would it not? I mean, it's a serious question. Well, it's a serious question. People have mooted the idea of assassinating him as being the way to stop what is going on. Do you think it would, even if we're not possible? We're not in a state of war with Russia at no. the moment, so that would not, in my view, be an option which the government could even consider. But your, your belief is that Putin is sick and may not have long to live? Uh, yeah, my belief... Well, take one look at him. If it was your father, what would you think? Yeah, he, he was seriously ill. I mean, I mean, the fact that he shook hands at that uh, victory parade with the, with the hand he doesn't use, mm. I think, is a clear indication that there's something fundamentally wrong. I mean, let alone the other symptoms that he's showing. Is it more dangerous for the world if he is say, terminally ill with a, a cancer or something, and only he knows this and his medical team, is that more dangerous because it may encourage him to do something reckless? Well, I think if he's seriously ill, his judgment may be impaired. So you have a collision, as it were, between the geopolitics of Russia mm. and uh, its loss of Ukraine and Putin's health. I think that's a pretty uh, unsavoury combination of factors. It's a very unsettling time at the moment for geopolitics. You've got President Biden being quite forceful about yeah. Taiwan and what he may do, taking the American position to a slightly stronger place than it's been before, saying he would engage militarily. We've obviously got Ukraine. You've got all the issues with wheat and other produce now, potentially causing starvation, especially in Africa and Middle East. These are worrying times, you know, massive inflation. What, what do you make of it all? You've been around the block, if you don't mind me saying, for a few decades. Yeah, Have you seen anything quite like this? No, probably not. We're living in a period of, you know, geopolitical... Well, maybe we could... We should call it crisis. Mm. Uh, the pandemic's been probably the most disruptive event socially and, to an extent, politically, since World War II. And on top of that now, we have a major war on the European continent. So... And, and let alone the other problems with, you know, the price of energy, the situation with China. We have a concatenation of crises, some larger than others, but, yes, it's highly problematic. Does social media amplify all this in the sense that when you were running MI6, you, you deal, dealt with all sorts of massive issues. Are things actually worse now or are they, are they just amplified by the fact we well, can see it all in Well, social media real time? definitely exaggerates and amplifies the problem mm -hmm. and, let's say, increases the level of social anxiety mm -hmm. because the messages are broadcast so widely and to so many people. But, I mean, I think the situation is genuinely worrying and difficult and, you know, we have a variety of apparently insoluble and difficult problems facing the government, facing any government, facing any nation-state. What's the thing you miss, miss most about being C in MI6, running our spies? And what's the thing you, you miss least? Well, I think being in a position where you know a lot about what's going on, uh, I, I guess I could say I never really had a boring day at work in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Not many people could say that. Uh, it's a privilege to be at the centre. Yeah. And to know what's going on. Also, um, slightly terrifying, though, wasn't it? I mean... Well, uh, the job is not for somebody who's of a nervous disposition, no. let's put it like that. I think you need to be relatively calm in the way that you view crises which at any moment can sort of escalate in front of you. What, do, what am I pleased about? Well, I think, in a way, I'm pleased that I'm not... <laughs> head of the service any longer. Really? I mean, I was in it for a very long time. And uh, I think I did my bit. 
mm. serve my country. Uh, I'm very proud of that. But uh, what was the moment? If I could let you relive it again, what was the single most memorable moment, for whatever reason, of your tenure? Oh, I guess you, it has to be 9/11. Yeah, and the events of 9/11. And when that happened, I mean, when you're in that job, you must know this is now your world has completely changed, yeah, as so yeah, many did. Yeah. But were you able to stay calm even in a moment like that? I think so. Ask my colleagues and friends. I think I had a reputation for remaining calm. You also had a reputation for integrity. If you had been caught as the boss of MI6 during a pandemic with severe lockdowns, uh, hosting leaving parties, uh, having a large number of your staff, 86 of them, getting fines from the police for having illegal lockdown breaking parties, would you have fallen on your sword and done the honourable thing? I wouldn't have been in that position. Right. So what do you make of the fact that the Prime Minister was in that position? Uh, I think I'm going to avoid comment on the Prime Minister. Well, you Minister. don't have to sit on the fence anymore, Sir Richard. Yeah. Well, I, uh, on that particular issue, I am going to sit on the fence. But, I mean, what, what I would say is that, you know, if, if, if you're in an organisation, particularly if you're leading an organisation like the Secret Intelligence Service, the issue of integrity is absolutely crucial. Mm. And, so you um, wouldn't have put yourself in that position? I, I mean, there's a picture coming out tonight from Pippa Carrera from the Daily Mirror, and it's a picture of what is quite clearly a lavish amount of alcohol for a party. I mean, there's just no denying it. Do you think when we get told as a public that's not a party, we're being taken for mugs, Sir Richard? <laughs> All I would say is if you're a lawyer, it's quite difficult yes, to describe what, think what a party is. <laughs> so I think that's, that's my reply to that difficult question. Final question for you. Who should be the next James Bond after Daniel Craig? Well, and should it ever, <laughs> ever be a woman? Um, I'm a traditionalist. And I think it, it, it should be a man because that's the way Ian Fleming conceived of the role. Correct. And uh, so... Uh, Who would you like to see do it next? Well, I've, I, I've looked at a list of the candidates yep. and my pick would be... And I'm, I'm not an expert. No, no. But if I was... The well, you player, are. You actually, you are. Well, I'm, I'm, an for, I'm an expert for the role. Yes. Um, I think the one who suits it best of the list, but I don't know all of them, is probably Tom Hiddleston. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I think he ruined it with the Taylor Swift ocean T-shirt Well, pictures. you know more about that than I do. I'm an Idris Elba fan myself. I think okay. he'd be a cracking boy. Well, he but... would be good, I agree. Yeah, but he's got that sort of steely if, charm. Yeah. Well, you need steely charm. I did actually pitch myself to Barbara Broccoli well, only three months ago. You would have been rather... Well, I don't think, it's not a big leap from Piers Brosnan no, to no, Piers Morgan, not. is it? I mean, let's be honest. Right? Well, maybe they should have the, the, a real C as M. Yes! Why not? A great idea, Sir Richard. So why don't you suggest it? <laughs> casting director. Sir Richard Dillard, what a pleasure. Nice to meet you. Very nice. Thank to you meet very you much for joining me. Yeah.